Well, Morris was here just a minute ago. Must have gone off into the woods to use the bathroom. Here comes Ruby. Here's my boys. Tux is over here doing his thing. Hey, bud. Hi. Good boy. I just saw Morris run and hide <laughs> down in the creek bed, so he's around. He needs to come up and get him some food before Marty and the rest of the crew eat the best stuff. Poor Donnie went out on his unicycle twice looking for his paper and it's not here. Ten minutes makes all the difference. Good morning, Ruby! Well, it's 56 out there this morning on a gorgeous sunny day. Going to be a great day to drive to the mountains for the Blue Ridge Parkway Tesla Drive. Supposed to be pretty weather up there and here all weekend, so that's good. Um, excited about it. Miss Michelle will be on kitty duty this weekend. She's looking forward to that. And um, yeah, it should be should be a good time. We'll be missing Johnny, who's staying behind for his final calculus exam in his college class. It just was bad luck that they lined up to be on the same Saturday. We'll miss him. Ruby is still calibrating, and I added up in Tesla Phi last night the mile since I got her back from the service center, and I was just over 300 miles. Um, you know, I don't have time to fool with it today because of the trip, and then we're gone over the weekend, and I just figure sometime Tuesday I'll hit 500 miles, and at that point, if the calibration hasn't finished, I think we can be 100% sure something is not allowing it to finish. And at that point, I'll write up a service ticket. Um, I It's not looking good. I don't know what's going on. I can't see the logs. Um, obviously, I don't think it's anything too serious. She's driving just fine. But it is a little, a little frustrating that I can't engage autopilot at this point. Um, and another reason why we would be taking Jules today instead of Ruby. It's mostly the safety score and Don driving Ruby before I get FSD, but it's also, you know, that trip wouldn't be very fun without autopilot. So it's one thing for these little 20, 40 mile trips in and out of Raleigh, but several hundred miles into the mountains and back, that would be, that would be not fun for sure. So basically the game plan is go home, finish packing, leave. Um, we might walk somewhere on the way. Um, uh, there's a meetup in the parking lot at 5 to just do an early check-in for those that came into town tonight. A chance to meet up with folks if we wanted to do dinner, which we probably do, and you know that sort of thing. So we'll have plenty of time to get there. It's four hours not counting uh, supercharger stops um, and of course Don and I are going to want to stop and stretch our legs several times regardless of walk time and charge time. So um, you know uh, it's going to take us five hours at least and six probably if we stop and we walk somewhere. So I got all my camera batteries charged up last night and what camera equipment I want to take and when I go home I just got to throw clothes and toiletries into a bag so shouldn't take shouldn't take too long and then cry over some kitties because I am sad to leave them although I know that they're in capable hands since she won't take any money from me Mandalorian the Razor Crest Connor put it together for Michelle I'm sad about leaving my kitties. <laughs> you hold down the fort, okay? I love you. Yep, I told little girl and big boy to hold down the fort inside. And you don't let the chair get, get lonely, okay? You keep the chair company. I love you too. I'm gonna miss you guys. You hold down the fort. Miss Michelle and Ariel, they'll be by to see you. And we're off.
Pretty much. So we put in um, the Asheville outlets that's on Brevard Road, I think. Um, eh. Yeah, Brevard Road. And um, it's telling us we need to stop in Hickory and charge for 15 minutes. Uh, we knew we would need to make at least one stop. And we'll probably stop in Colfax or one of the other chargers. Let me just bring up the charging network. And um, it's Colfax number seven. And that's Kernersville. And there's Colfax. We'll probably stop at one of those two to use the rest field and obviously plug in while we're using the restroom because we're not going to make it all the way to Hickory. Probably not. We'll see how we feel though. Right. Just depends. So how many miles did we get at 100%? Uh, 276. Okay. And she had put up a message that you're not going to have any regen. Um, which is expected when the car battery is at 100%. And we've, you know, just lost a mile off the cream while we were sitting here doing right. stuff, running the air conditioner. Right. I re actually ran out to the mailbox and back. Okay. I see Stripey was over there by the van. Is nobody coming this way? This is that stop sign that's a mile from the intersection. Yeah. Literally, it's uh, 30 feet. Oh, easy. Yeah. yeah. It's a long ways. That's the convenience store there on the right. Yeah, Don's driving full self-driving, or excuse me, Jules is already alerted one time while I was deep in thought on my phone and scared me to death. She alerted herself, I think, because she went over the line. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. This is all her. Yeah. We're going out the back way, sort of past Sharon Harris and um, the lake and heading you know gonna take 421 up to greensboro that's the that is the preferred method from our house versus yep. 55 up to 40 over that takes longer all right donnie i'm already oh god that is the fourth truck or dump truck that's come over the line in the last what three miles oh yes i'm ready to go punch somebody now they have scared me to death well there's drop-offs on the side of the road and the the one dump truck back there on the bridge there was pedestrians walking and of course he never braked and he just came over the line into our lane and I'm like had it already. It's worse than downtown Raleigh out here on the back country roads with these trucks. Right. Well, what it was is that he assumed I was paying attention, which, which I was, but I wasn't driving. The car was because if I'd have been driving, I would have lifted my off the accelerator a little bit, let him complete the maneuver. But Jules was driving and Jules is pedal to the metal. You know, zoom, 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 and then all of a sudden she panics because, oh my God, that guy came into my lane. Well, I had already figured out that's what he was going to do because I'm a human, he's a human. You, we, I saw the pedestrians, he saw the pedestrians. So that's just one of those things, the, the letter of the law, He, the truck was totally wrong. Uh, Jules was 100% right, except for that's not what people do. Right, that's Don's interpretation that's of it. That's my interpretation. My, my in guy interpretation. Right, my interpretation of it is if your lane is blocked, your lane is blocked. Yeah. So stay in your lane, break, do whatever you need to do. Don't come into my lane. She, all, all the time downtown. She speaks that way as a, a Tesla driver <laughs> and not guy driving a, a nine cubic yard uh, dump truck, which is what that guy was. Well, he doesn't both, care what he hits. Most of the time downtown, it's other cars. In the neighborhood across from our neighborhood, it's other cars. All right, she's gonna turn on her blinker. Yes, finally. Goes. Well, that was the least amount of fun I've had on that pretty backcountry road ever in the history of us taking the backcountry road to go to Greensboro yes, or anywhere. Probably. That was not. That was not fun, and it really was nothing to do with Jules, who is taking the turn here, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Not like Don would take the turn. So there's a picture of the consumption chart. It says we're going to get to Hickory at 24%. But of course, I, you know, maybe we'll just go to Hickory. It just depends. But um, we'll just make a note of what it is and we can compare later. Maybe if we actually stay that route. We wanted to put in the stop for the Colfax supercharger so I typed in Colfax and then I typed out supercharger and it knew I wanted charging but only nearby but not Colfax so that was sort of frustrating. Um, I'm going to try to add a stop again and this time I'm going to put uh, Colfax sheets. I don't know if it'll like it in that order either. 
Yeah, Sheet, Sandy Ridge Road, Colfax. But it would have been nice if, um, and it doesn't know we're actually going to charge there, I guess. Right, it doesn't know. It doesn't know, so it'll have to, um, but it did add that. So it's like an hour between Colfax and Hickory. So like we said, we knew we're we need to do gonna need to do a coffee exchange and an iced tea grab. Um, and now let's look back at the energy chart, which is still. Um, I'm guessing that's not Hickory anymore. Guess time will tell. Uh, it's like mm, 75. It's in 15 mile yeah, increments. That would be the Colfax. Yeah, more like 70 because this isn't a full square. Yeah, that's, that would be Colfax. Okay. <laughs> Look, I, I think you should be able to, when you plot a trip and you hit the supercharger, you should be able to add a supercharger. Stop. Stop. Because I appreciate that Hickory is the absolute ideal uh, place to do minimum amount of charging maximize uh, a minimize make the trip as fast as possible shortest amount of time hickory is it but my bladder can't handle that I'm gonna have to stop and pee before we get to hickory so I would appreciate it being able to say I want to change just a little bit to this one right here I get it that's making the trip less efficient but that I can't make it all the way to Hickory, or if I can, I'm going to be very uncomfortable. It's going to be a miserable trip. And we're just trying to have fun out here. We're, we're, right. we're well ahead of schedule for the 5 p.m. check-in. and Yeah. There's good. that rest stop that has all of the renewable stuff, and I think there's a little trail there. And We had talked about actually doing a little walk or something, yeah. Yeah, something on the way in if we see something of interest. You know, we're basically vacationing, not trying to get from point A to point B. Right. You know? Yeah, I agree. So, yeah. You know, you know, we haven't really uh, mapped it out in intimate detail. We just use what the uh, navigation. Oh, so she's going to take us up through uh, Pittsburgh. It's always a, a question if she's going to take us to 421 all the way or go through Pittsburgh. Yeah, go past the Jordan Lake Dam. Yeah. I was just doing some reading and for people that have been stuck at 99 percent calibration for an extended period of time the go-to recommendation by other users that seems to have worked is to just restart camera calibration so um if i get home monday from the school run and i still am not calibrated um because i'm not going to do it at you know 6 30 in the morning i will um I'll try that. It's under service now. Back in the day, you couldn't calibrate your own cameras, but now you can. We're here in Siler City, but we don't need the supercharger yet. And that one's sort of like in a food lion parking lot. Uh, yeah. Restrooms are not straightforward. There are there's plenty of restrooms during the day, but it's not straightforward. You'd have to walk just a little. We're here in Colfax. We did, uh, as predicted, a little better than predicted. We did good. Just afternoon, 12, 11. Wow, it got busy while we were in there. There were like three, maybe four, that supercharging um, tip screen is new. We're at 51 kilowatts, so we're not getting a particularly fast charge. Of course, our state of charge is not super low either. Yeah, you can just barely see that the font is so small on the speed now. And if you get rid of the tip screen. Well, one time a minute ago, it was down here. It keeps on. It's like got three different charging screens. So what is it doing? We're at 51 kilowatts. Okay, so we should probably just go. We got 212 miles of range. It's added 33 miles while we went to the bathroom. So we're at 50, so we're. We're slow, we're under 70 kilowatts. Yeah, okay, well we're just gonna go, we're, we're good. Oh, uh, no, we got plenty. Yeah, so where does it hit stop? I just, um. You used to have a stop. You don't have to hit stop. I, I know, but yeah, it used to have to stop. I agree. 
so it's still telling us um it'll come back in a second come on christmas yes the charge port is open i know um it's still telling us we should stop in hickory yeah, for well, five gonna, minutes well, we're gonna stop yeah well hickory. we're gonna drink a lot of tea between here and hickory and we're definitely gonna stop the sky's really pretty out there we uh you know weren't at colfax any longer than it took us to go inside use the restroom and get something to drink and it was really busy at the sheets and all around that exchange at uh, the interstate there so while it was super close to the interstate and no wasted driving time it was uh not our favorite stop during a busy time of the day or a busy day of the week i don't think we've been to colfax before that station's pretty new and we're not over this way tons and we usually stop at greensboro although i think that's the one folks were using for Greensboro a while. The other one was closed for a while while they redid that sheets or something. Right. We're getting close to Hickory. Um, at some point along the way, our efficiency was so good that um, the car removed the Hickory stop. But we're going to stop anyway. So I just re-navigated us back to Hickory directly versus Asheville. Hickory via Asheville. Or Asheville via Hickory. <laughs> so we stopped at a little park in Catawba County in Newton, North Carolina. We are here at the parking lot and we can follow the road, which I think is on our left up to up our left up to the Bunker Hill covered bridge. Island Ford Road. Okay. We're just stretching. We had talked about getting a little exercise on the yeah. way. Yeah. We didn't walk this morning. So, and there won't be a, a lot of walking. Although from the parking lot into the outlet mall where the food court is, that's a little bit of a hike up there. That is. Huh, literacy trail, I don't quite get it. I guess it's trying to advertise a book or books that you might want to read. I'm sure it's something to do with history in North Carolina. So Donnie, I thought we were headed to the mountains today where it was gonna be cool and refreshing. Oh, that's right. We're not quite at the mountains yet. It's 84 here. One of us has on a long sleeve shirt. The other one of us has on a, a nice SpaceX short sleeve shirt. Well, mine's it's kind of two th two quarters, two thirds, three quarters length sleeve. It's not really a very heavy shirt. Oh wow! Look at the wildflower. Yep, it's pretty. Very. Wow, that's some sort of a wild orchid. Very pretty. Yeah, that's the one nice thing when you get up to the mountains and go to the overlooks and stuff. There are all these wildflowers you don't see in the Piedmont. We have our own wildflowers. Some of them overlap. Dang, that's a tree. <laughs> all right, whatever that wildflower is, I want it in my yard. There's a good bit of it here. I recognize the wild ginger. We have that. Wow, I'm really impressed. It's very pretty. I have a wildflower identification book. You know, I take a picture with and ask Google Lens what it is. Google Lens ought to tell me. Let's see if we can get Google Lens to tell us. Inquiring minds want to know. Apparently, it is a variety of trillium, according to Google Lens. Google Lens thought it was white. It's pink. Yeah, Don took a picture and his Google Lens said the same thing. If you haven't ever tried Google Lens, you should. Especially when you're trying to ID stuff that you're not quite sure about. And that's the wild ginger root I spoke about. Guess I should take a picture of that and make sure that's what Google Lens thinks it is too. Oh, there's the covered bridge. See the rusty roof? Yep. Yeah, I guess we thought we were walking right over to the bridge, but we're at what Don calls the photographic spot. There's some mountain laurel behind you. Like we saw at our park. Oh, down there. Yep. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Nice. 
Thank you. Nice patch. You just couldn't resist, huh? Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of trash on this trail, thank goodness. It's like, you know, soon to come, so. Oh, wow, there's um, out in the wild Carolina allspice, like we have in our front yard. Mm -mm. The flowers aren't as open as ours are because it's probably a little behind here on the, the warmth. Yep. Wow, that's so cool. I mean, I knew it was native, but. So there's foam leaf flower here. This is what this is right here. And there's a little yellow um, flower here that is, uh, let me see, I have it up in front of me. What, Donnie? This white thing. White yeah, downy yellow violet. And then there's this little. Like star sheet. It thing. looks like, I'm going to say aster again. So the little white flower is chickweed or stellaria. Stellaria sounds so much more eloquent. Yeah, so back the way we came, we passed this bridge to get us over to the other side of the creek. I don't know that I saw exactly what this water is. And uh, that should get us over to the covered bridge itself. Although, as Don said, the real picture-taking spot we were sort of already at. National Historic Civil Engineering Landmark Bunker Hill Covered Bridge. The only remaining example of the improved lattice truss timber bridge patented by General Herman Haupt, 1817 to 1905 in 1839. Haupt was chief of military railroads for the Union Army during the Civil War. This Philadelphia-born civil and military engineer, author, inventor, and industrialist was one of the first to develop a rational method of truss analysis. His 1851 book, General Theory of Bridge Construction, is one of the earliest American books on bridge engineering. Constructed 1895, restored in 1994. Okay. And there's some examples of different kinds of trusses. Well, isn't that really cool? Um, that they restored it. So part of this was restoration actually after the war. Very neat. Yeah, Don took my heavy purse off my shoulder. Thank you, Donnie. Got to carry the world in there, you know. Right. <laughs> well, the thing said they make it shaped like a barn so the animals wouldn't get scared. They're used to going into things that look like barns. So that's part of the reason why they were uh, a look the way they do. They are watching, it says, under the graffiti here. The whole bridge has graffiti, which is a little sad. But hey, at least they didn't um, take a sledgehammer to it or light it on fire. So what do you call it when they use the wooden dowels to uh, connect the pieces of wood together? Um, I think they call them pegs. Pegs, yeah, okay. Well, if JB's watching and we're wrong, he'll inform well, us. Tortoises and tendons too involved, but that, I think that's just, those are simple, just pegs. I don't think they have any. This pegs. was where it comes through there or something. Yeah. Was that the other part you were talking about? Yeah. That's interesting. So they, they drive the peg in there, and then they drive a wedge into the peg to spread the peg, and that makes that like super tight. Gotcha. All right, so you're not wrong to call it a wooden pin, but it's also called a trunnel. Yeah. It says we're on the Carolina Thread Trail. This goes around to viewing spots of the other side of the bridge, so I figured since we're here. That's my assumption. Totally different lighting, cool rock formation. It's really pretty right now with the light green colored leaves. Very nice. So yeah, definitely worth coming down the other side. Yeah, look at the, the way they've shored up that. Yeah, it's very pretty. To try to keep the uh, river from uh, washing Taking away. Taking it away, yeah. 
the bank this We're stopping in at the Catawba Creamery. I want to go play in the water. Yeah, go for it. Wow. They let people get close over here. Oh, and there's the water wheel. I'll have to walk a little farther so I can actually see it. So there's where you go down. I'm not really going to go down. I have on Crocs. I don't have on my climbing shoes. Although I have them with me. Because we're going to hike tomorrow morning. Impressive. Well, I know for a fact how slippery the rocks at Yates Mill are with the moss on them. Oh, uh, yeah. Carolina Thread Trail again. And we're three or four miles away from the oh, other location yeah, yeah all right i can't just look at it i gotta go down it it reminds me of the fountain at the nc state fairgrounds the general store is that white building behind don and you can't go in the mill building but we haven't done it yet we're gonna take the point eight five just shy of a mile trail around the pond. The George Huffman House, 1820. Yeah, there are several properties on the mill property here. Yeah, I've got my hair down, so it feels like a sauna out here at 84 degrees. Let me tell you, I'm ready to put my hair up. I don't know what I was thinking. Donnie's heart did a little pitter patter. Yep. My Skip foot went beat. my foot went into a hole and I fell. Wasn't my fault. It wasn't lack of balance or being clumsy or nothing. It was a hidden hole in the ground and I the simply grass is really tall. Yeah, the grass I had just made a comment about they need to mow the trail if this is where people are supposed to walk and right about then plop. Good thing is is my ankle doesn't feel sprained. And all, my left knee took all the weight, but it's not bad. I don't think I've got any cuts or anything. My blue jeans look okay. My camera equipment's not hurt. And there's some of your flowers. Yeah. That's uh, one of those deciduous azaleas. You know, that might have, that's what that was back at the other park, too. I misspoke when I said it was the mountain laurel. It was azalea like this. I sure hope we can get some of it going. Yeah. I guess right now, technically, we only have one piece of it, but I told Donna, you know, I have to add two azaleas to the yard per year. <laughs> I like to buy them in colored pairs, but not all the same color. This is much better trail that's in the woods. And all of the lily pads out there on the pond. That's a lot of lily pads. Yeah. A little bit different than the kind that are on Yates Mill Pond. Yates Mill, they're kind of round. That is more of a heart shape. More of the dogwood. On the boardwalk to get us back to the other side. <laughs> this frog's jumping in off to the side. Plop, plop, plop. I want it in my yard. <laughs> Don pointed out that there's a beaver dam there. I agree. We may have read the sign wrong. I think we were supposed to add a couple sections together because we've gone more than 0.85 miles. Yeah. I think we're up to a mile and a half. Not that I wouldn't do it all over again. It was a really nice walk. Well, we ain't done yet. <laughs> Don't talk like that. I'd better be able to see the pond at the top of this hill. Well, I think this is where we go. The pond, that's the pond there. The you pond do? Well, yeah, it's been on Okay. Our, Just on don't touch roof. those leaves there. That's Not poison that ivy. Nice yeah, that, that, I'd be dead if I touched that. Well, we're kind of hitting ourselves in the head for not starting our workout before we started this walk because we really don't know how far we've gone. Maybe Don's Google Fit, yeah. he'll be able to see the whole trail. It'll let him add on the yeah. other part of the walk or something. Because since we started it a little bit ago, we've gone a third of a mile. <laughs> oh, that all? That's, that's that apple calculation. <laughs> The mill is basically straight across where that white building is. So we've got a little more walking to do around this edge of the pond. Don thinks we missed a crossover. Well, or it's gone. Or it's gone. gone. Yep, and so we walk the outer 
pond trail instead of the inner pond trail. <laughs> There's some people coming with their dog on the other side of the trail. <laughs> Should we warn them how far it really is? <laughs> I don't really want to know. But it know. says that blue is... This is the road, Falls Creek. We, that's where we cross. <laughs> well, that blue, they lied. Murray's well, this Mill Pond. Yeah, Murray's Mill Pond Loop Trail. 0.85 miles. No. In their dreams. Well, the Carolina Thread Trail distance is one mile. Right. From Maybe here, from here to there is probably a mile. mile and then the 0.85 is the rest of it or something. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. From where we turned it on, which was past halfway, I've got 0.68 miles. <laughs> so. I can't read my, my sunglasses on. Well, I would do it all over again. But that done wore me out for the afternoon. <laughs> Got her exercise. Yeah, it's a good thing I had a little bit of extra sugar before we went on that walk. It's the heat that's got me. Yeah, if so it was uh, 60 instead of 85, then I'd be okay. So they confirmed that it was just shy of two miles. Yeah. It felt like it was the full three miles that it we did. normally walk at 85 degrees. We're not used yeah. to this heat. Yeah. <laughs> Don got me some cold water. All right, we're in Hickory. And it's not full, so that's good. We don't need much. So it's ramping up over here. 22, 35, 55, 75, 94, 110, 120, 142. Maxed out at 142. Yeah, well, this is only 150 kilowatts. Yeah, this is uh, an older supercharger. Yeah. It says we need 10 minutes yeah, well, my at time. least yeah. to go to hit to make it to the outlets at 5%. So we'll be here maybe, I don't know, a little, a little bit. While. A little bit. Oh no. He's actually putting that Tesla on a tow truck. No, 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 no. Say it's not so. Well, by the time we back got back to the car, it says we'll get in Asheville at 24%. We got 161 miles, so we can leave anytime we want to. 25 minutes to get to our charge limit. You got it set at 80% or 90%? I think it must it's be 90. 90. Yeah. The Tesla's loaded up and they're taking it away. The poor woman's traveling uh out of state that's north carolina tank though. is it she's got a dog with her and a pet carrier and it's not good well, I guess we don's gonna go make sure she's okay the dog crate it probably won't fit in jewels with all the other stuff we've got in the car today it's like a sheep dog or something looks really well behaved i, I mean i just feel horrible outlets in Asheville just after 6 p.m. We saw pictures on Facebook of them putting up the big tent. So while we're waiting around tomorrow, we've got shade. It's 86 out there. Can you believe it? Wow. Sweet wrap, cool plate. That was very efficient. Well, somebody had to brag not having to walk anywhere, huh? Yeah, I've got to have electric motive assist. <laughs> so people are coming in, charging for a bit, moving away from the charger, parking over here. There's our tent for tomorrow, so we have some sunblock. Badges and check-in is over here. It's just real informal this afternoon. This is how you protect your Tesla at the at the hotel parking. <laughs> sentry mode, sentry mode, and sentry mode. Oh, 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 oh,